What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I am the Godless Engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a video from a newish creator in the Christian community. His name is Jeremy Scott Despain. He's not fully convinced that atheists can be thankful for things. And I'm genuinely curious as to why he thinks this. Because I find myself to be thankful for things all the time. So this would be new information that I, in fact, cannot be thankful for anything. So if y'all want to fuck around and find out how we can't be thankful as atheists, then please stay tuned. If God doesn't exist, you and I have nobody to ultimately thank for the goodness that we experience every day in our lives. Uh, what? So unless God exists, then just nobody can be thankful whatsoever? I mean, I'm thankful for a lot of things in my life. Like, for instance, I'm very thankful for the job that I have. But I don't have to believe in a God or even, you know, a God doesn't have to exist in order for me to be thankful that I got the job. I worked very hard to get this job that I have now. I worked very hard to attain my degrees that I have. So I can definitely be thankful just in general about it. it really doesn't concern God. Not that every day feels like a good day, but there are good things we should behold and recognize. Have you ever stopped and thought about that truth? This brings about the question, what is goodness and how do we determine what to be thankful for or who to be thankful to? All this and more on today's episode of Actual Faith. I am your host, Jeremy Scott Eastman. First of all, damn, Jeremy, could you back off on the background music a little bit? But more to the point, what is good? I mean, that's a very subjective thing to talk about. And determining what we should be thankful for, I feel like, is a very basic thing that you learn growing up, either from your parents or just, you know, in general, like your experiences in life about how to be thankful. I don't know. This this seems like basic shit to me, but I can also see how people might not really understand to be thankful, but I don't think that any of this means that we have to be thankful to a God. I feel like that's the direction that you're heading, but maybe, may, maybe not. I, I'm not sure. In any case, the whole good, what's morally good, bad, or neutral, this is all very subjective. So I, I get the feeling that we're moving a very moral, argumenty kind of route. We'll see where we go from here. Wait a minute, Jeremy. Are you telling me that God must exist for me to be thankful? No, I'm not telling you that at all. But I am attempting to clarify that you do not have anyone to ultimately and directly thank for the origin of the good things that happen in your life. I mean, I feel like I do have somebody to be thankful for. I mean, I don't have to be thankful to some overarching, you know, deity in order to be thankful just in general for things. I know that we covered this in the very beginning, but I mean, you let off right here by saying that you're not claiming that atheists can't be thankful. You're just saying that if you don't believe in a God, then you have nothing to be thankful for or to. I don't see how this makes sense. Being thankful for something is a human emotion. It's a human thing that we do. I don't know why that has to relate to some overarching deity figure in order for it to make sense, because we make it make sense. You could make the claim that there are people who have helped you indirectly to accomplish good in your life, but they are not the source of that goodness. Well, I did not say that they were the source of that goodness, uh, I, but I also don't understand what you mean by being the source of goodness. I don't think that there's some kind of goodness well out there that all goodness springs forth from. I, I don't think that there's like a source of goodness anywhere. Goodness is a subjective thing that we determine like on a per instance basis as to whether or not something is good, bad or neutral. This is just something that we've always done. There's nothing out there that is innately good. Think of it this way. People can lead you to the river named goodness, but those people are not the river. They only show you there is a river from which flows goodness. So in a way you may thank them for showing you the goodness but not for being the source. Who, who 
thinks that anybody is a source of goodness in the world. Somebody can do good things, but that doesn't mean that good things have like a source somewhere. I, I just I keep picturing like a faucet where somebody's turned on the faucet and just good shit's falling out of it all the time. But that's not how reality operates. I don't think that there has to be a source of goodness for goodness to exist. And I would love to hear some kind of argument that says that there is a goodness source that is required in order for this goodness to even exist in reality. Who is the source? from which all blessings flow. Who is the standard of what is good? Without God, I'm not convinced one can know what is objectively good, or for that fact, evil. Well, so we're getting into the moral argument, and basically moral arguments or moral standards are all subjective. So for you not to know if something is good or bad or evil, as you put it, that's going to be on you to determine that. Now, we have societies that have, you know, sort of molded its people into having some kind of basic moral foundation. In various ways, the societies enforce those basic moral foundations on its people. So while some of these things seem to be absolute or quote unquote objective, they're really not because between these societies, things do change. There could be a society out there that's completely different from the society that you grew up in, where maybe graping a person is perfectly fine or robbing somebody's perfectly fine or murdering somebody's perfectly fine. Any of those things could be perfectly fine in a different uh, civilization or a different society that molds its people's moral foundation in a different way. So these are all very fluid things that we're talking about here that change with the ebb and flow of human civilization. Without God, good and evil, blessing and cursing are subjective terms that actually mean nothing. You know, whenever I hear a Christian say this, I immediately think about how their own moral foundations have changed over time. And how, according to him, that would make them like useless things. Because he's saying right here that if morality is subjective, then that means that like good, bad and evil are useless terms because they don't mean anything without some kind of absolute grounding. But even within Christianity, which the, that's the religion that this guy's pushing, even within Christianity, there's not an absolute foundation that has changed over time. So that makes it not absolute. It depends on what time and place and civilization you're operating in as to what that God wants your moral foundation to be. Prior to 1865, it was seen as perfectly normal to own another person as a slave. In various civilizations across the world, slavery had been the norm, so it wasn't seen as bad to keep somebody as a slave. But once society progressed to a point where we found slavery to be abhorrent, all of a sudden, God doesn't like slavery no more. Well, let's disregard the fact that he lays out all those laws in the Old Testament about how you're supposed to treat your slaves and... Uh, all that kind of shit. I don't know. It kind of seems like God's perfectly fine with slavery. So my point is, does this make good, bad, evil in the Christian like sense of a moral foundation? Does that make those labels useless? I don't think that it does, because while they are subjective, morality is also subjective. So they still provide some way to communicate how a person feels about a certain action that's been taken. They're socially constructed. But nothing can really be good. If nothing is really good, isn't it pointless to be thankful? Thankful for what? All behavior is neutral. On this view, all actions are equal with no moral significance. You see, I completely disagree with this point because obviously he needs God to tell him what is good or bad. I, on the other hand, can determine what is good, bad, right, and wrong on my own without the need for somebody else to tell me what is good, bad, or right, and wrong. And could I be wrong? Yeah, and I have been wrong. Throughout my life, I've changed my moral foundation to better match what I think is good, bad, and right, and wrong. And I'm sure that he's done that too throughout his life. But we can definitely be thankful just in general or to other people without a God. Because being thankful for something or being thankful to someone is just a, an experience you have. And that experience is, is a chemical process in your brain. It's a chemical reaction that happens that provides you with this experience. 
the experience of being thankful for something is just chemical reactions. So can you be thankful without a God existing? Yeah, because God doesn't dictate the laws of chemistry or physics. Humanity's internal tendency to be thankful indicates, at the very least, that we recognize what things are objectively good. When he says objectively good here, what he actually means is absolutely good because you can be objective about things, but I don't think that those things can be objective themselves. So like saying that something is objectively good uh, is better understood as being absolutely good because I can objectively ascertain whether or not I think something is good or bad, but that doesn't make that thing itself objective. So I always want to point that out when we're we're discussing morality because these apologists, they seem to use objective and absolute in kind of the same way, sort of equivocating them, when really they're not interchangeable. God is the most reasonable explanation for objective goodness. And I mean the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Godhead of Christianity. And I would ask, how do you know that it's specifically that God? Because we've been going through the Bible on our daily Bible podcast that posts every Tuesday morning, right around 1115 a.m. Central Time, <clears throat> just in case anybody wants to read the Bible with us. But we've been going through the Bible, and I have to say, God's a dick. He's an asshole in the Old Testament, and he's kind of an asshole in the New Testament, but we'll get there soon enough. Just looking at the Old Testament, that is not the standard for good. I cannot fathom what you find in the Old Testament that is good. Recently, we've been going over Ezekiel, and at this one point, God grabs Ezekiel by his hair, pulls him up, and drags him to, I think it was Jerusalem, and sets his ass down and then has a death squad go through the entire town marking people that are to remain alive, but then having his death squad kill everybody else regardless of age or, or sex or, or position in the community or whatever. Just everybody that didn't have their special little mark on them, they killed them. How is this the foundation of good? How is anything in the Old Testament a, a good representation of what we should consider to be morally good. Generally, when I ask these questions, Christians like to point to the Ten Commandments. But the first four commandments are just God stroking his own ego. And he could have easily just done that in one commandment and then had things like, hey, it's a bad idea to own other people. Or, hey, it's a really bad idea to grape people in general. Don't do that shit. Oh, also, for the number four slot... Women aren't property. Those would have been good things to include in the top 10 commandments, right? But God doesn't actually do that. He would rather stroke his own ego for the first four and then have some basic societal things that follow after that. He makes sure to label women as property, though, which we all know that turned out well, didn't it? My point is, is that you cannot be certain that your particular God is this ultimate source of goodness. Or he, without him, nothing can be good, because it seems that with that God, good be takes on a whole different meaning. Because I have no idea why you would consider that God to be the source of all goodness. The Father, the Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. He is the transcendent, all-powerful creator of reality. Okay, and how do you know that he is those things? How do you know this? If it's just the Bible that gives you this indication, then you really don't have any good evidence to suggest that it's him. More importantly, how do you distinguish your God from the other gods that has supposedly existed in the past? I mean, true, we don't believe in Zeus now, but who's to say that Zeus isn't the God that does all of those things. How, how do we know that Zeus really isn't the God that provides this well of goodness and he just continuously pours it on the world? How do you know these things? You're not, you're not really telling us how you know, you're just sort of proclaiming them to be true without giving us sufficient evidence. Now, maybe you cover that in your other videos. I'm just saying that you can't just sit there and be like, oh yes, definitely my God is the good one. Especially when you read the Old Testament, you will realize that that God is an asshole. He's not a good God. We can thank God because he is good and from him proceeds goodness. There is no philosophical dilemma or incompatibility with this biblical truth. Oh, buddy. 
Oh, let's see. Uh, do you remember the time when Moses was on his way to Egypt to free all the slaves like God wanted him to? But for some reason, God got a little pissed off at him on the way and he was about to kill him. Luckily, uh, <laughs> Moses's wife fought fast on her feet and then took a really sharp rock and cut the tip of her son's penis off and threw it at the feet of Moses. And then God was pleased. God is a really good God. He reigns foreskins from above. There are so many stories that we could go through as to how God is not a good God. There are times when God has commanded his chosen people, the Israelites, to go into a city and just kill everything in it except for the little virgin girls. How is that good? And how can you say that the idea, at least our modern idea of what is good or bad, how can you say that that's not incompatible with the Christian version of God? Because any time that I read the Old Testament, it's all I fucking see is just a bad, shitty God that is exacting his will on his people, and his will is diabolical as fuck. For these reasons... Christianity can confidently proclaim what believers throughout the ages have. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Yeah, so basically, let me see if I get this straight for your video here. We should be thankful to God because he is the source of all goodness. He is good by nature, so everything he does is good. And the support for that is, well, the Bible says, or the Bible tells me so. I, what am I supposed to do with this? I already don't believe in your God. I don't believe that your Bible relays any kind of historical truth, let alone any kind of philosophical truth or any kind of truth about your God. So why would quoting scripture at me prove to me that this God is good or real for that matter? Yes, I get it. Your book says that God's good. But when I read the words on the page, he just comes off like a shitty asshole. So that's going to be it for the video today. I really appreciate you heathens coming by and watching with me. I really am unimpressed by this video here. It just seems like his evidence that God is necessary for good is because the Bible says God is necessary for good or that God is the source of good or something like that. I just the only thing that I get from it is, oh, atheists can't be thankful because God has to exist. Of course, he also says that he's not saying that, but it definitely comes across as, well, atheists can't really be thankful because they don't think that God exists. It's somewhat confusing the way that he's not fully convinced about us and our thankfulness. But in any case, it just boils down to a moral argument, a moral argument for God, that is. But that is always going to fail when it's coming from a Christian apologist or any religious apologist, really, because these moral foundations that are supposedly absolute in these religions are not absolute. They have changed with society. Society changes first and it drags religion along kicking and screaming. So whatever religion that you're a part of, it simply cannot have an absolute foundation because there's never been an absolute foundation. I'd love to hear what you heathens thought about his video. So please go down below and leave me your thoughts down there. And hey, while you're down there, why don't you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. And hey, don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.